Oh man, I'm super excited about this video, mainly because it's current and fresh. So my coworker sent me this screenshot and asked me if I could quickly put something together inside a code pen. And you know, I am always up for a challenge. Besides, these things always make great YouTube videos. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I wanna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. This is part five of a multi-part series on SVGs. Check the description below for links to all the videos and a link to the SVG playlist. So if you've seen any of the other videos in this series, you'll know that I'm giving away a free SVG cheat sheet that outlines these seven different ways you can get an SVG on a page. So I'll include a link in the description below. Last thing, before we jump in, I have timestamps in the description below if you wanna jump around. Let's do this. First, let's look at this screenshot in a little bit more detail. We have two circles, or I guess a donut is a better description since the center is missing. One circle is in the background and the second circle sits on top, illustrating percentage or progress being made. And then we have text in the center of that. In the past, I probably would have reached for CSS first, but SVGs actually make this even easier. Plus, I don't think that that rounded edge on the progress is even possible with CSS. If we were to do this in CSS, that progress bar would have to have a flat edge. Okay, I'm gonna write this in CodePen. So if you've never used CodePen before, it's a code sandbox that is great for experience and sharing code snippets. You can create an account for free, but of course, more money will give you more features. The first thing that I'm going to do is to minimize the JavaScript panel. We're going to be doing everything within HTML and CSS. Okay, let's start by stubbing out our SVG. And SVGs are namesakes. So boiled down, this simply tells the browser what rules to apply when parsing the data. Data, data, data. So the first thing that we're gonna say is XML NS equals HTTP www.w3.org 2000 SVG. And then we'll do something similar, except this time we'll say www.w3.org 1999 Xlink. Perfect. Next, we wanna establish the width and height, otherwise the SVG would fill whatever space for whatever container we give it. So I'm gonna say a width of 230 pixels and a height of 230 pixels. Notice we didn't have to send it a unit of measure, so we're not specifying pixels. It knows that we're talking about pixels. So next up, we need to define a view box. And if you'll remember in a previous video, I said, and I never, never, I never touched the view box. Well, in the previous videos, we used SVGs that were exported from Figma or Illustrator. This case is different because we'll be writing our own from scratch and we need to specify what that view box is. All good, so let's take a hot minute and talk about some of the fundamental concepts of SVGs. One minute on the clock. You can think of an SVG as unlimited graph paper or like the game of Battleship where plotting points on a graph. D2, A1. The view box is like a window into that graph paper. So part of the reason I said before I never mess with the view box is because that changes your window. The first two values are your X and Y coordinates. Usually this will be zero, zero. So think top left corner. The next two values are the X and Y coordinates for the bottom right point. And as long as the first two values are zero, zero, you can think of this as the width and height. So for our SVG, let's say zero, zero, 230, 230. Awesome, so we're well on our way. Now for a circle, technically we could draw a path within our SVG, but let's make this even easier on ourselves. SVGs have a circle element built in. Okay, we wanna define the coordinates for the center of our circle. So we can say CX equals zero, and CY equals zero. And next, we wanna define the size or the radius of our circle. So we'll give it a radius of 100. Okay, so this is a perfect example of our view box at work. Our window isn't allowing us to see the rest of the circle. And we can move it down by changing the center point with our CX and CY values. So 115 
is the exact center of 230. Okay, perfect. Kind of crazy how easy it is to position and size that. And I think you can also see how helpful this would be if you're plotting points on a graph. You could set the center point and then adjust the radius or the size of the point while keeping the location of the point the same. Now remember, we had a donut, so I'm going to remove the fill, set the stroke width to 25 pixels, set the stroke color to ES, which is a very light gray. Easy peasy, right? Now I'm going to duplicate our circle for our progress ring, except this time I'm going to give it a color of red. Now here's the part that starts to get a little tricky. We need to adjust the red ring for a progress percentage. And strokes and SVGs have this really great property called stroke dash array that allow you to create a dotted or a dashed line. So we can add this to our red circle by saying stroke dash array, equals, then it takes two values, the length of the dash and the length of the gap. So I'm gonna say 10, 10. So you have this nice little piece of peppermint. We can play around with this a little bit. We can make our dash longer or we can make the gap longer. Maybe this visual will help. We wanna make the dash the entire length of the circle and the gap the entire length of our circle. Then if we shift it or change our offset, it looks like our percentage is changing. Now I'll admit, at first when I was trying to build this, this whole concept was really confusing to me. It does not help that I've forgotten a lot of geometry that I learned in high school, so stick with me. We wanna take the length of our circle, and this is called the circumference, and to do that we need the radius, and that's the point from the center of the circle to the outside edge. And now multiply that times two times pi. So fortunate for us, Google has a calculator that we can use. Let's plug in our radius. And remember, we set this inside our SVG when we said R equals 100. So if I come back here and type in 100, you'll see 628.32. So perfect. I'm going to use that value, so copy, and I'm going to plug this into our dash array. Now it looks like our circle is full since the dash is the entire length of the circle. Okay, now let's change that first value, the length of our dash to be 66% of our circle. So we wanna show the progress to be 66%. If we were gonna figure out 66% of 628.32, then we could say 628.32 times 0.66. So remember, to calculate percentages, you have to move the decimal over two places, or essentially divide 66 by 100, which is 0.66. So we can revise our calculation to account for dividing by 100 by saying 66 divided by 100 times 628.32. The great thing about SVGs is there's a calc function which will actually do the math for us. So I can say calc, 66 divided by 100 times 628.32. And I could do the calculation and use the actual value here, but if I leave it like this, then I can easily change the value to say 25% without having to open up my calculator. And plus, if we ever turn this into a React component, we can easily pass in the percentage and let it do the calculation for us. Okay, let's set this back to 66%. Okay, this is looking pretty good, except that we want the graph to start at the top and wrap around. So to rotate it, we can use the transform attribute. So I'm gonna say transform equals rotate, and I'll say negative 90 degrees. Huh? <laughs> That's strange. When we did that, we lost our red circle altogether. So what happened? Well, it rotated the circle outside of our view box. If we change the value to something smaller and slowly increase the value, you will see it rotate off the screen. So I'm gonna say change view and go into debug mode. Then if I pull up my Chrome Dev Tools and we wanna grab our progress circle, you can see here we have a transform rotate negative 90 degrees. So let's override that. I'm going to say transform rotate and let's say zero degrees. You'll see there's our progress circle. And if I slowly increase that, you can see it rotate off the screen. 
To compensate for this, we need to add a translate value of negative 230 pixels or the width of our circle. Sweet. So just a few more things before we can call this done. We want the red circle to have a rounded end. There's a property called stroke align cap that we can add and set it to round. Now, say we want this to animate in. Fancy, I know. So this is probably easier than you think and we can use CSS to change the length of our dash. I'm going to give our red circle a class of progress. Now on the CSS panel, we can hook onto it. Now the first thing I wanna do is define our actual animation. So let's say keyframes, animate, and this could actually be named anything. I've named it animate here, but it could be bananas. And then we wanna say at 0%, so at the very beginning of our animation, we want the dash in our stroke array to be zero. So say dash array zero, and then it will animate to our 66%. And the gap still needs to be the circumference of our circle. So the progress will look empty and it'll animate to 66%. Let's assign our animation to the progress class. So I'm gonna say animation, and we're gonna call animate, since that's the name of our keyframes. We want it to last one second, and we want it to ease out, and we only want it to go forwards. Woohoo! Now we just need to add the text to the center of our circle. So SVG has a text tag built in, so we can create two, one for our number, and one for our subtext. Next, we just need to position it. I'll set X to 115, since that's exactly half of our 230 pixel circle. And I'll give Y an arbitrary value of 110. And we can dial that in if we need to. Okay, so same for the subtext. Let's say X is 115, and we'll give Y 135. So it's a little bit further down. Okay, not totally stellar, but we can tweak this within the CSS. So let's give our percentage a class of percentage. And in our subtext, a class of subtext. Then in our CSS, let's target the percentage first. Right now our text starts at the center, but it's not really centered. So let's shift it over with text anchor middle. We want our text to be red. So normally with CSS, we'd use the color property, but since this is an SVG, we will use fill instead. And let's make the font bigger. So font size, 0.3 and a half rem. And let's make this a sans serif font. So I'll say font family, sans serif. And let's make the weight bold. Okay, now let's set our subtext styles. We can actually copy and paste most of the styles from our percentage class over to subtext as a starting point, but let's make the text black instead of red and let's change the font size to one rim. Now the cool part about this is our SVG can scale without any trouble. I can change the width and the height to 100. And the view box stays the same and continues to manage our aspect ratio. So everything scales down and up perfectly without any additional code. So cool. Done. Dun, dun, dun. All my code is on CodePen, link in the description below. Feel free to download it, fork it, copy it, tweak it, whatever, it's yours. If you like this video and wanna see more videos on web design and development, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding. Many of you may or may not know, I work for a company called Zeal and they actually underwrite my channel. That's right, they wholeheartedly support what I'm doing on the YouTubes. Frankly, I don't know many companies that do that. In fact, most companies don't even want you to have side projects, but in my case, Zeal not only encourages it, but they support it. Anyway, they're hiring, so if you're an engineer and looking for a job, or even if you're not, but wanna work for a great company, plus you get to work with me, Check out our website for the job listing. I'll include a link in the description below.